Hey, welcome to Survival Crafts. This is a show where we like to share some how-tos in the world of traditional skills, survival, prepping, bushcraft, you name it. This is show number 10, and I'm Brenda Holder, your host. Well, finally, this is it. Many of you have been emailing me and asking me when we're going to be doing this video, and today is the first of our three-part series on our easiest hide jacket in the world otherwise known as the circle jacket. On today's video, we're going to be learning how to create the pattern and how to cut it out. Here's a list of materials you're going to need. You're going to need some paper because you'll be doing some calculations. If you have a hard time with math, then you're going to need a calculator. No need to worry, the math is not difficult. Other items you'll need. A measuring tape. You'll need a pen or a marker. I prefer the marker. It makes things a little bit easier. You will definitely need some scissors. A steel ruler is always helpful. You'll need some hide. Now with your hide you want to go over it and make sure there are going to be no holes in it. It's a really sad thing when you cut out your pattern for a jacket and you find out there's a hole somewhere in the middle of it. So really inspect it carefully. And the f one of the final items you're going to need, second to last, is I got an old sheet from a thrift store. It should be a double size flat sheet and I'm going to be using that to trace my pattern onto, to create my original pattern. And our final piece of the puzzle is our model. Okay, so now we come to the point where we need to actually measure our model so we can get all of the measurements to transfer onto our pattern that we're going to be creating. Now, our model Jordan already has his own jacket, so the jacket I'm going to be making is for Dave, the camera guy. But Dave has to be behind the camera, so we're going to just show you how to measure using Jordan. I don't want to confuse you, so just understand that the measurements that I'm going to be coming up with are actually for Dave. Now this couldn't be simpler. There are actually seven things to measure. Let's start with the first one. We're going to be measuring um, from the seam of the t-shirt that he's wearing down to the desired length of the jacket. It's a good idea to have your model wearing a t-shirt unless they want the jacket for winter wear, in which case they're probably going to have some bulky clothing on underneath their jacket. So have them wear that bulky clothing when you do the measurement. Makes it a little bit more accurate. So we want to start at the seam of the t-shirt and we start kind of in the middle of the shoulder or even where the collar starts and we want to measure all the way down to the proper length that you require. In this case, it's going to be 77 centimeters, and that is around 30 inches. So just put your arm out to the side, Jordan, that arm. Now for the sleeve, here's where we have a great bonus. Your sleeve measurement is actually going to be the exact same measurement as the front of your jacket. So that, too, is going to be 77 centimeters, or 30 inches. The next one we have to do is around the chest at the bust line. So I'll just get Jordan to lean forward a little bit. And right around the bust line. And on our model's case, that is 101 centimeters, or close to 40 inches. The next one we want to do is the circumference of the bottom of the jacket. Now some people might like that fairly tight and snug around their hips, or some people might like it a little bit loose. That's entirely up to you. So whatever your length was down here, that's where you want to measure your circumference. So, Jordan, I'll just get you to slide forward a little bit. In fact, why don't you just stand right up, and then you can sit down again in a minute. So what we want to do is we want to measure the circumference. Now if you want it snug against you, 
then you take a snug measurement. In our model's case, he wants it a little bit loose, so you can kind of just determine uh, by pulling it out roughly how loose the model wants it, and then you take that measurement. Have a seat, Jordan. In our model's case, we have 100 centimeters, which is around 39 inches. Um, we also want to measure across the back of the neck. This is very easy. On our t-shirt, all we're going to do is go from seam to seam. So we're going to go from the seam here, across the back, and we'll measure to this seam. And that, on our model, is 20 centimeters. So that's around 8 inches, I believe. And to measure the front, we want to take a measurement from this seam, and I will generally go down to the center of the collarbone. Again, 20 centimeters on our model, or 8 inches. Now, two more measurements we have to take. One thing that I learned was that we want to go from the armpit down again to the desired length of the jacket. So, into the armpit. Don't snug it up really tight. You can go right up into the armpit and then drop down a little bit. This will give you a more accurate measurement. And then you take your measuring tape, once again, down to that desired length of the jacket and mark that down. In our model's case, that inside seam is 57 centimeters or 22.4 inches. The final measurement, we have to measure the cuff or the, the wrist sweep. So I'll have Jordan bring his arm out. Now, to measure the cuff, this again is going to be personal preference. If you want a fairly tight cuff, make sure it's not too snug on the wrist or they're never going to get their hand through. But a nice loose measurement around the wrist. For the most part, you're going to want to add a little bit more um, width to your wrist sweep. And in this case, I think we had, I'll just have a quick look, it was around 32 centimeters for our original model. And I'll show you what that looks like on here. So that's roughly what your cuff would be like, which is pretty normal for most cuffs. You can make it a little bigger. I wouldn't go too much smaller though. So about 32 centimeters or around 12 inches. Those are all the measurements that are done. We have all of those marked down. Now let's go and see how that transfers onto your circle jacket pattern. Okay, so let's take a look at our raw measurements. So from the shoulder to the jacket bottom is 77 centimeters. The chest is 101 centimeters. The hip, 100 centimeters. The back of the neck is 20. Front of the neck is 20 centimeters. The inside seam, the armpit to the jacket length, is 57. And our cuff is 32 centimeters. OK, now we need to adjust our, um, our measurements to allow for the seams that we're going to be sewing in. So on the, the um, picture in front of us, we can see that from the shoulder jacket to the jacket bottom, um, our raw data was 77 centimeters. So we now have to add two and a half centimeters to that overall length to allow for the seams. So um, that gives us 79.5 centimeters. Um, for the chest, we're adding five centimeters. To the hip, so the circumference around the bottom, we need to add 7.5. For the back of the neck, we don't have to add anything. For the front of the neck, we don't have to add anything there either. That will stay the same. Now the inside seam, from the armpit, we're going to be reducing that by 7.5 centimeters. Now I know that sounds a little bit confusing but in the next clip I hope that I can um, help you make some sense of that. You'll actually see that um, by removing seven and a half centimeters at the armpit area it's actually increasing 
um, the size um, under the armpit. So I'll show you that in the next clip in a moment. Now the wrist sweep or the cuff, same thing. We don't need to add anything onto that at all. So, uh, um, so that's all going to work very well. Um, so those are our additions for the seam allowance. Now, uh, in the next clip coming up, um, after I show you the seam allowance for the uh, armpit, we're going to do a little bit more math, but don't worry, it's easy stuff. Okay, when we cut our pattern, um, in fact, any pattern that we cut out, often it's folded on, uh, on folded cloth. So you end up cutting through two layers to uh, reduce having to cut twice. Now in our pattern, we're going to be folding the cloth twice. So in some cases, we're going to be cutting through four layers. I will demonstrate this a little bit later when I actually draw and cut out the pattern so it'll make more sense. For now though, we're either going to be dividing some numbers by two, some will be divided by four, and some of them are not going to change at all. Once again, it's going to make perfect sense once you see how the material is actually folded up. But first, let's have a look at these numbers, uh, which will account for all of the folds. Now, the reason why some are divided by 4 and some are divided by 2 and some are not adjusted at all just simply depends on where they lie on the fold lines. So the shoulder to the jacket bottom is not going to change at all. And that will stay at 79.5 centimeters. On the chest, because of the area that it's going to be on, it has to be divided by 4. So we go from 106 centimeters to 26.5. So when we unfold everything, it still equals the, 20, or the 106 centimeters. The circumference of the jacket bottom also has to be divided by 4. The back of the neck is only going to be divided by 2. The front of the neck and the inside seam will not be changing at all, so they will stay at 20 centimeters and 49.5 centimeters respectively. Now on the wrist sweep or the cuff, um, it's going to be set on a double fold, so it is going to be divided merely by two, which will give us 16 centimeters. Hopefully that will make sense, but I think once you actually see me cutting the whole pattern out, you'll get a much better idea. So let's go and take a look at how that pattern gets cut out. Okay, so I mentioned that um, I was going to be using a, an old sheet from a thrift store. And one of the reasons why I do that is, first of all, it's, um, it's a great way for me to, um, to create a pattern. And if I'm not really sure whether it's gonna work out or not, then this was just a really cheap little piece of fabric that I bought. Um, the whole sheet itself cost, I don't know, five dollars. And um, so it's, it's an easy way to create a pattern out of something that if you kind of mess it up, it doesn't really matter. However, you can, because it's fairly tightly woven, you can even use this as a lining if you want it inside the jacket. The other thing that it will do is that when you um, finish cutting out your pattern, um, it's going to give you an idea of exactly how much hide or material that you're going to need. So that's great. Now, please note, I am using a little miniature here. This is not what you're going to do. You're going to be using your entire, uh, your entire sheet. I'm just doing this just so I can stay in camera frame. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit too difficult for you to actually see what I'm doing. And, uh, and it's easier if you can kind of get the, um, the close-ups on it. I have a lot to explain here. I did say that I was going to talk about the, um, the inside seam and how actually subtracting uh, 7 centimeters off of it um, with, actually in, increases the size. I'm going to explain that once I've cut the pattern out. Now, based on all of our final numbers, and um, uh, I, I will put that, um, that same clip up again in terms of our adjustments. I will put that up one more time for you after I've finished filming this. But according to our final adjustments, 
Um, we are either going to leave some things exactly as they were, and others we're going to have to either divide by two. Some of them we will be dividing by four. So, first of all, we have to set up our, our material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top. I know that part's out of frame, but just bear with me. Okay, so you're going to take it from the top, and it's important to take it from the top and bring it down to the bottom. Along the top edge right here, this is where our sleeves are going to be. Now I'm going to fold it one more time. It's important to go from the right to the left. Even lefties can do this. Now, I have a little square. On the top, you can see there's two folds. There's a fold there, one fold there. So that is our double fold. Along the front, it is just a single fold. I know it's four layers and that's going to make sense in a few minutes. So it's important to keep it oriented this way um, throughout your project. So the double fold along the top and the single fold along the right edge here. All right. It's also important that um, as you're uh, laying out your sheet, you get as many wrinkles out as possible. When you fold it down, smooth out the wrinkles. Fold it across, smooth out the wrinkles. Okay? So now what we have to do is we're going to start doing um, our measuring and marking. The first measurement we're going to do is for our jacket front, which if you remember, on our model was 77 centimeters. I, I apologize, um, I'm pretty sure that it's um, uh, people in the United States are the only ones left in the whole wide world to um, not be metric. Um, here in Canada we went metric a long long time ago so I I apologize if I'm not doing this in inches. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can look it up though. Okay. So I'm going to, instead of measuring everything out in like the whole 77 centimeters, I'm just going to cut down uh, and, uh, and just use, use smaller micro measurements here, but it'll all still work out. Um, the, the model that I'm making here, it does not matter. It will turn out exactly the way that a large scale jacket will be. So the little miniature measurements I'm making here, you're going to make your full measurements according to the calculations that you did earlier on to get all of your exact measurements. So um, from the top of the jacket, so the shoulder, which is kind of up here, down, our length was 77 centimeters. So um, I'll just make a measurement right there. The next measurement has to go along the top and it's the exact same measurement. It's not going to be any different. It will be 77 centimeters. So you've got one uh, along the top edge and one along the bottom. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take that 77 centimeters and we are going to mark it all along in an arc. So we're going to keep our um, measuring tape up in the corner and we're just simply going to keep that measurement just to give us an arc all the way around. Now I'll just do one more here. So now you can see we've actually got this little arc going on and that's important. And get rid of my pen for a moment. We have to cut this arc out. The tendency is the other measurements that we're going to make, because this is a straight line, we're going to assume that we have to go out this way. But we don't want to do that. We actually want to make our measurements along this arc. So I recommend highly that you cut this out. So let's do that. Now, hopefully I won't go out of camera too much. It's very difficult working on your own and, uh, and trying to film at the same time. I don't always have the benefit of my camera person with me, so bear with me and I'll do my best to uh, make this as good as I can. Okay, so there's our arc. Now we've got a little quarter pie here, so to speak. And again, make sure that your orientation is correct. We've got our double fold along the top 
in our single fold along the bottom. That is very, very important. I'm sorry, I completely messed up on that one. I, I told you that it was 77 centimeters. It's actually, we did um, our final adjustments and it was 79. So I've, I've recut this to make it um, the, the correct um, size. So 79 from there to there, 79 from there to there, and all the, all the way around. So the next measurement that we want to take is going to be our, um, our uh, hip the bottom of the jacket and that was 26.9 so um, we'll just mark that so I've got my measuring tape here and we'll just measure it right about there um, and the next one we want to measure is going to be the sleeve or the sweep the wrist sweep which was 16 centimeters. So I will do that right there. Okay, now we also have to measure the inside seam, which was 49.5. And for this, I'll just do it at five centimeters. Now, when you do this, you want to just simply make a mark there just for now. The reason is you also want to make sure that this, uh, the chest is going to be correct too. Um, so the chest, it should be 26.5 and that's going to, we're going to bring it in a tiny bit. So that will be our new measurement there. So now we want to get a straight edge and we want to measure, or we don't want to measure, we just want to draw a line from that mark to the bottom of the hip here. So we'll just draw that down. The next one we have to connect, sorry, my table is really moving here, um, is we want to connect from the armpit to the sleeve. And we'll just draw that line in there. Okay, now we need to um, measure for the back of the neck and the front of the neck. So the back of the neck, we came down to 10 centimeters. And what we're gonna do is we are, let me just move this in a little bit more. So we're simply gonna draw um, our 10 centimeters right along the very top of that edge. And then for the front, we're going to go from the outer edge down 20 centimeters. And we'll just draw our line. The other thing I like to do is just press there. And we can also draw a line down the front, but I'll just use the fold because I don't want to mark on my gray board here. Okay, now we need to cut. So um, I'm going to just turn this way because it's a bit easier for me. So we want to cut from the hip up to the armpit. And then we're going to cut from the sleeve, the outer edge of the sleeve, into the armpit. Pull that off. The next part, we want to cut through all of the layers just along the edge, along that 10 centimeter mark right there. Now we can open this up and you can see it looks like a little shirt already. Kind of cool. But what I need to do is I want to cut up the middle here. So I will cut up along my fold line. And now I can cut up there for my front of my jacket. This is really difficult. <laughs> and 
sorry, my camera is really in my way. Um, let me just cut this out of frame just so it's a bit easier. It's basically the same thing, but you get the idea. So now we've got this little, this little miniature jacket here. And that's exactly what a full-size jacket is going to look like. There's no difference. So I want to explain about why in this area we subtracted the seven and a half centimeters. If you see here, regardless of what I cut in here, the length from there to there stays the same. That does not make a difference. If I were to increase the seam allowance under the armpit up this way, I would actually squeeze the arm in there so it would be a lot smaller. But by coming from here down, I can actually increase the width of that so the arm will fit in. The overall length does not change, but this width in here does, and that is what's important. Okay, so now we have our circle jacket all cut up and all ready to go. So you can open it up fully like this if you like, place it onto your hide and then trace everything all the way around, including the front and you wanna definitely cut it straighter than I did. But that is the basics of it. I, I'm, I'm absolutely amazed at how incredibly easy this is. What I would do is if um, you're making this for yourself or whoever else, is just have them try this on. Have them try it on and then you can kind of um, pinch and hold uh, and, and make sure that this is actually going to fit them. And once you're happy with the fit, and remember, um, <laughs> getting that cheap material, if you have to remeasure and recut a few times, then uh, then your cheap material is, is ideal for that. So make sure that you do measure this, that you're happy with the measurements, and that... Um, uh, once you are happy with that, then you can just take this, open it up, trace it on your hide, and in the next video, we're going to be ready to put this together. Now, you might be tempted to say, well, I can just sew it all up as it is, and you sure could. That would be fine if you wanted to do it that way. However, I am going to be showing you how to put fringing in here, and then we'll sew the welt in here. Now fringe is not just decoration, although to some people it looks really nice and it is very decorative. It's not actually for decoration. It has an entirely different functional purpose, which we'll discuss in the next video. And I highly recommend that you don't leave the fringe out. It really does serve an important purpose for your jacket. So um, until the next video, Hopefully this is all going to be clear to you. Um, you'll have an entire week to practice and play around and get your measurements just right. And um, if you uh, have any questions or comments, go ahead and send those off to me and I'll do my absolute best to answer them. I am also going to put a description, uh, or not a description, I'm going to be putting a link to the lady that that um, I learned this off of onto her website. Um, she's the one that I learned from her YouTube video how to create this circle jacket. So um, she might be able to explain the pattern better than me and uh, I think she's fantastic. She's got a lot of really great stuff on her YouTube channel. Okay, and then that's it for now. So remember, part two of our video series, you're gonna learn how to sew in the welt, the fringe, um, I'm going to show you how to add hide loops and antler buttons so you can actually button your jacket up and it will look really quite nice. And in fact, after that video, the jacket really be complete enough for you to wear and be considered finished. But if you want to go further, then in part three of the video series, then I'll show you how, how to add decorative fringe and decorative beadwork. And here's another look at the final measurements as I promised. So regardless of what measurements that you're using, if you follow the same mathematical formula where you divide the chest by four, hip by four, back of the neck by two, and the sleeves by two, you'll come up with the exact measurements that you require. 
Well, hopefully you found that fairly easy. I found that pattern to be one of the most amazing things that I've ever come across. As I keep saying, I am not a seamstress and I certainly don't know how to create my own patterns. But I thought that would be a very useful and easy thing for me to video and hopefully you'll get a lot out of that one. On our next video, I'm going to be showing you how to sew that together and add some fringe work to it. So, hey, if you like what we do, why don't you give us a like or subscribe to our videos. You can share it on Facebook and you can also put it onto your website. We like it when you share it with lots of people. We'll see you on the next video.